Hi, John. Hi, Dre. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm okay. A little tired, a little apprehensive. Okay. Uh, Phil McKernan is coming up in one week's time. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, what do you want to ask me about that? <laughs> well, uh, first of all, you've reached your funding goals, yes? Um, well, more or less. Um, but I want to thank everyone who did contribute. I started a GoFundMe because Phil McKernan invited me to come to this uh, Clarity Boot Camp, or I've seen it called a few things, Clarity Boot Camp, Brave Mind Weekend, and so on. And that was awesome to, to get that invitation, but uh, it's not something that he can just give for free. He's not the, the organizer. And the ticket price is basically a thousand pounds. So it's like, I really want, and I think, will benefit hugely from going, but I don't have that money. So your suggestion, um, thank you, started a GoFundMe and rapidly within the space of just a couple of days, I was pretty much up to that level, which was quite difficult emotionally to accept. Yeah, it was funny to see you struggle with the amount of love you were receiving. I felt really kind of, it, it was a, an interesting experience. I was like, oh no, I don't deserve this. Oh no, people are putting money out here that I don't feel worthy of. And although obviously I asked for it, but I was expecting like 20, 30 pounds or something. And that, I guess, tells me something about continued valuation of myself. That it's like that would have confirmed my vision of myself. Whereas around like 800 pounds that was pledged, um, rather shook me in a different direction and any sort of change or challenge to what you think of yourself can be unsettling even when it's good. Um, I remember actually uh, in an intense moment some, uh, someone close to me said, you know, at, in your essence you are a good person and I just burst into tears because I, I couldn't accept that. That in itself is good enough reason to go to the event, I would say. I think all of the, like that and my reaction to the money is like, yeah, I really need to go to this thing. Um, so thank you, everybody, so much for putting in that money. Didn't quite make the full amount, but that's fine. Um, find ways to, to top that up and uh, on credit cards and that kind of thing. And my parents pitched in a little bit as well not through GoFundMe, so that's that also helps. Because GoFundMe takes more of a cut than you would expect, by the way. If you're thinking of, of using it, I got, uh, I think, 800 pounds, which is an incredible amount, but the amount pledged is like 900 pounds. So like 100 disappears in different fees and VAT charges that you're not sure what the VAT is for because it's a gift, but there you go. Cool. So how are you feeling about the impending... McKernaning. The impending McKernaning is, uh, it's, it's two things. Like one, it's, uh, I'm just super excited to go and have that experience. Um, but it's also a sense of trepidation that kind of like, uh, drinking a, a psychedelic, you can know that you're going to be challenged, but you don't really know what that's going to be like until it's happening. And it's probably going to throw up a lot of stuff that I, I don't expect to do with self-esteem, self-worth, roots of like what he said uh, as part of what this this weekend is about is not just finding clarity on what you want to do with your life but what are the patterns that we tend to slip into to sabotage ourselves and often those are the patterns that we don't recognize trying to trying to find ways to escape the thing that we don't really feel that we deserve like meeting somebody um, who maybe you'd have an amazing relationship with but some part of you fucks it up because you don't really believe that you deserve that person. And in this case, it's like, do I really deserve myself? <laughs> which, which is even more complicated. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also uh, pretty, pretty scared. But it's all happening at a point where I'm, f I'm finding I need some clarity because I feel like I've been heading in a good direction out of an academic career path that it took more than a year to sort of, much more than a year to really realize is just very uh, mentally and emotionally unhealthy for me, although I had put so much of my life and effort into it and had attached and still haven't totally unattached my self-worth to putting things out within that realm. Like, okay, you, you created something that's of academic worth, that means you're, wor you're worthy or good as a person. and. 
to get out of that is is challenging but in the process it's kind of a jump into the the unknown that i don't know what happens after my final uh, research uh, position ends later this year um i know that i've been trying to do things which actually are meaningful to me like making our podcast like uh, writing things online trying to uh, connect with people who are following things about uh, creating things in the realm of psychology and self-help and self-exploration that I enjoy contributing to and sharing what I'm learning as I go. Um, but, you know, nothing is, is guaranteed. And I'm aware that you can't have guarantees in these things, but that's is trying to negotiate sitting in the tension of the middle place of not really knowing um, what it is. So as this 2018 has begun, I've been in this sense of, oh, things are really impending now and I'm really kind of lost and need some help to find a greater connection with what I think is important and find the self-confidence to be able to pursue it and believe that I can make things happen and remove whatever the thought patterns are that are trying to trip me up and make me periodically or even on a day-to-day -day basis be going, oh, this isn't going to work, fuck it, I should just give up and go and work in the supermarket because that would be in some ways better mentally for me than working in academia but at the same time is obviously then just giving up on everything that i think is important but it's so scary it's scary to try and follow the things that, that you think are important you get so hacked off when people talk about with the best of intentions oh just follow your dreams and follow your star and I'm like well it's kind of missing out the point that often you're kind of thinking i don't think my dreams are possible and i don't know if i deserve them and how am I possibly going to get there? Wow. Yeah, that, that certainly puts a damper on the follow your dreams. Yeah, <laughs> follow your dreams, except there's the voice going, you're just going to be one of the people who kept trying to follow their, their dreams and things that were meaningful, but they were deluding themselves that they were never really capable of it. Even your phone agrees, right, with that autocorrect thing? Yeah, if anyone wants to play a fun game... Write your own epitaph using predictive text. So I wrote, here lies John, he was, and then just accepted each word that it suggested. And I got, he was in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> which is your, totally your phone true. phone knows, man. It, it knows too much and it shares too openly. <laughs> okay. But you're feeling pretty positive about what this will do for you. I'm trying not to have expectations because I don't know. It's, um, mm -hmm. And that was part of the reason I was... Uh, feeling anxious or a sense of unworthiness around the people giving me the money to go because as I joked with a friend who, who donated I was like it's like now I my my self-worth has got shareholders and they want to see positive returns and I can't guarantee that you know uh, I can't sue Phil, Phil McKernan if I come out the weekend and I'm like I don't know I don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> but it seems like putting myself in the place of possibility which I think if I go and commit to the whole process that's the best that i can do and i will do that that sounds good are you going to do anything to prepare or are you just going to go in uh, I, d I could practice crying you know so i'm ready <laughs> i think you're good on that one i'm gonna do yes everything um i think some reflective exercises will be good try and ask myself i can try and document these on camera i guess what i want to know or what my fears really are, what is the core fear at the, the root of why it's so difficult for me to believe in the things I want to do or be so easily distracted by um, panic, I suppose. It's always, I think, linked to a desire to try and control things, which people pointed out and I recognize in myself, to sort of have the certainty that this is the right thing to do and if I do this, then this. or when things seem too difficult or like there's too much going on and I need to do several different things at once, it seems overwhelming because I feel like I'm spinning plates and they're all falling down. Um, so maybe the root of a lot of it is just being able to sit more comfortably um, with the fact that I can't control all the plates, but that the, the repercussions of that um, don't have to be me spiraling into a, you're awful and you should kill yourself, which is a very familiar thought pattern. But more like, well, you can't can't control everything. You're only human, and that's okay. Okay. Cool. Well, I look forward to see, well, to hear how it went. Um, Maybe you will see. Yeah. Apart from the tears streaks down my face. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, um, 
I think every time you've interacted with this type of experience on any form, whether it be Phil last time or ayahuasca or anything like that, it has made long-term positive change in you that is compounding. It's like you're investing in the bank account of your self-worth and I think it's going well now. I think for a lot of people, if you're, if you're just struggling with similar things and trying to, to know from the inside if you're making any progress, it can certainly help to document it, which is partly why I'm doing it, that so that other people perhaps can connect with the things that I'm experiencing and help. it helps me when I see such things and go, oh, that makes me reflect about some of my own experience. But you also get to then look back and go, oh, who was that guy then compared to me now? Um, and a couple of people have said recently to me that I seem a lot lighter to be around um, than I did a couple of years ago. Less sense of like tension and anxiety or worrying about what other people think of me. And me on the inside, I, I can see some of that and I do feel some of that, but it's kind of hard to know where, where you're at. It's like unless you take progress pictures of yourself at the gym, it all happens so gradually that you don't really notice what's happening. Cool. Any closing thoughts for the people that have supported you or the people that are interested in this and Philip or anything like that or anything? What would you like to close this with? Um, I'd like to just say thank you for watching and I'm going to try and document the whole thing as I go. So less fancy looking video shots probably of me crying in my hotel room after the, the uh, interactions. And I couldn't be going to this thing without your support. Um, so thank you so much. And I'm going to put my all into it and embrace it. And whatever demons and darkness come up, then um, I will accept that and work with it. Um, and I hope that uh, something positive comes out of it for myself and anyone who's wanting to invest the time to see what doing a Philip McKernan or similar event actually means. Um, so, yeah, maybe next time I see you, I'll be weeping. Well, thank you for sharing with us and good luck. Yeah, luck. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. That's all I can say. So I don't know when the next update will be, but uh, I think probably when I'm en route to uh, the venue where it's happening. <laughs>